Good morning. That's Pastor Mark Driscoll here with uh, Oakdale Free Methodist Church here in Jackson, Kentucky. Glad to be able to, <coughs> excuse me, to minister to you today through the Word of God. I hope that you celebrated uh, Resurrection Sunday yesterday um, with uh, with great joy, and I hope it was a good day for you as we celebrated the fact that He, Jesus Christ, is risen from the dead, that He was. Uh, 2,000 years ago, crucified on a Roman cross for the sins of the world and became the atoning sacrifice for all of our sins. He also set us free by his blood from the power of sin, and he demonstrated the love of God for a lost people, and he also showed us the map of how we are to live, giving ourselves, laying our lives down, loving those that, that are in our lives through service, sacrifice, forgiveness, grace, and mercy. Uh, certainly not the things this world tells us to value. So we're here today to, to celebrate that he died on that cross, but on the third day, he rose from the dead. And uh, it does matter. Don't listen to those false teachers who tell you it doesn't matter if Jesus rose from the dead bodily. Uh, they have not read their Bibles. Uh, so, uh, or they've only read the parts they like. But anyway, it's it's evil. It's wrong to say that. Christ rose from the dead. His resurrection, his bodily resurrection is central to the truth of what God has done for humanity through his son. And for anybody to deny that or belittle that is just, it's just heresy. Um, Christ is risen from the dead in a real and personal way, in a real tangible way, uh, not in, a, in a, some kind of esoteric, feely kind of way. He was dead and he came back to life and he is alive today and he will come again and uh, I hope that you're prepared. I hope that you're waiting for him. I hope you're trusting in him as Savior and Lord. I hope you're not wasting your life uh, trying to find some other way to save yourself, some other way to bring peace to your life. Christ in us is, is the way of peace and the way of hope. And uh, that he, he is all we have and he's all we need. And so he's alive today. And I, I hope you know him today. I hope that you have turned to him and are walking with him. Now, I want to encourage you today. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's Resurrection Monday. You know, a lot of people have stopped saying Easter. And I understand that, um, you know, because it has connotations of some paganism uh, that we don't want to adopt. And we certainly is not part of the resurrection story. And, and, I, and I get that. Uh, others, many are, are beginning to say, let's just call it Resurrection Sunday. Uh, hey, I'm cool with that. Uh, Jesus rose from the dead. That's what it's about. And so, but today is Resurrection Monday. You won't find that on the church calendar. You won't find that celebrated in the, in the Walmart or anywhere else. But today is Resurrection Monday. Let me pray with you and we'll talk about it. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, that, that through the gift of of your son uh, we have eternal life and that's really what it all comes down to whoever believes in him has eternal life and Lord and nothing else matters whoever has the son has life whoever does not have the son does not have life there it is oh Lord we need you we receive you we trust in you as Savior as Lord and King Lord, we don't just remember something that happened 2,000 years ago. We want to live in the reality of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we give you thanks and praise today. Guide us today. Help us to learn how to live by faith and in hope and in the power of your Spirit and in your great love. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, <coughs> excuse me. Um. What I mean today is Resurrection Monday, and, and what does that mean? That means that this simple idea, that when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, uh, that was a, a, a victory on so many levels. Um, he not only conquered sin and death, so that we not only avoid the penalty of judgment, which we deserve, but we're set free from that through faith in the risen Christ. Not only that, but through his resurrection, we have God's power in our lives to live resurrected, risen lives. 
Read Colossians 3 sometime where it talks about if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God, that we're called to live with an upward view, an upward lifestyle. And that Paul tells us in Ephesians that, that the same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. And because that power is in us, we're called to be imitators of God. Can you, that, that is a powerful thought. We're called to be, we're his workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God's already prepared for us that we should walk in them. And, and just the power of that. And many Christians never really get there. Many Christians are like on probation. You know, I, he died for me and I better just live best I can. Well, no, you live in the power of God. If you live in the best you can, that's religion. Religion's doing the best you can. Uh, I can't, the best I can can't uh, save me. What saves me is him in me, Christ in me. The Bible says Christ in you is the hope of glory, right? So we live that, that out. And, and that doesn't just happen on Easter Sunday once a year. That's, that's every day. And, and, you know, it's easy to celebrate that he's risen on Sunday when, it, when it's the Sunday celebration day. And, and we love that. We, man, we had a great time yesterday in church. We were singing and praising and, and doing all this stuff. We had baptisms after the service. And I had an afternoon with my family, had a great meal, had a great time together. And, you know, all that's wonderful. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's great. And I hope, you, I hope you did all of it. And I hope you had fun. But I'm going to tell you something. Today is it's Monday. Hello, it's Monday, and you know what Monday, the reputation Monday usually has. People get up and think, oh, I wish I could just go back to bed, right, because it's hard. you got to get back to work, and you got all these things going on in your life. But you know, the real proof of the resurrection is not in my theological argument. I mean, that, that's important, and there's a place for that. The real proof that Jesus Christ is alive is in how he lives through me in all kinds of circumstances. Now, and I'll challenge you today because that, that's where, we're, where we need to, to wake up. We need to realize that the world isn't going to come to Jesus because we had a cool worship service yesterday. No matter what you did to, to get the crowds on the Easter Sunday and get all the people to come, you know, that might be nice for a couple of weeks. Uh, you might get some, some newbies in your church a couple of weeks. Uh, but that's not what we're out to do. We're out to reach the world. And that happens through the resurrected life. Uh, how, do, how does anybody know Jesus is alive? They've got to see him in me and in you. They've got to see his love, his power, his grace, uh, his freedom, his joy. You know. And so I want to show you just a little snippet of what Paul and Barnabas did on that first missionary journey as they traveled um, we're going to a place called Iconium and uh, I'm not going to give you a lecture on Iconium I don't really think it matters right now what kind of city it was here's the deal they went there to preach the gospel and they showed that Christ is risen and no matter what the devil tried to do they kept showing that Christ is risen and uh, it may have been a Monday. I mean, whatever it was, whatever it, it was, day of the week it was. Listen, Christ was alive in them. Let me read it to you. And as I read it, you're going to notice this, this back and forth kind of thing. Something really great would happen, and then something really bad would happen. And something really great would happen, and something really bad would happen. Does that feel like your life sometimes? You know, you, you get up, and you get going, and you have a good thing, and then a bad thing, and a good thing, and a bad thing. And, and uh, man, that can be exhausting. Let me read it. Are you ready? Are you with me? If you have your Bible, it's in, in Acts chapter 14, verses 1 through 7. Listen to this. Now at Iconium, they entered together into the Jewish synagogue. That's what the apostles always did. Whenever they go into a city, first stop, the local Jewish synagogue where the Jewish community would be because they would get the gospel first. Right? Gospel first to the Gent Jews and then to the Gentiles. And the Jewish synagogue and spoke in such a way, listen to this, they spoke in such a way that a great number of both Jews and Greeks believed. Man, that's awesome. Powerful gospel preaching. Now, preacher, if you're listening, never underestimate the power of you preaching the Word of God effectively. 
and, and excellent since they spoke in such a way. Meaning, now it wasn't the cleverness of their words, but they spoke under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And because of that, because of the power with which they spoke, people were convicted and were responded. Both Jews and Gentiles were getting saved right there. It was powerful. That's a great move. But let's move it. Let's see what happens in verse 2. It says, but, <laughs> there's always a but. Somebody's always getting their butt in the way. Listen to this. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles, and what did they do? They poisoned their minds against the brothers. You know, one of Satan's attacks is to is, is a, a, a distortion. They poison the minds of people. You know how you poison somebody's mind? You, you say the, the, the kind of things to get somebody to, to not like somebody. You, you, you kind of put half-truths. Uh, maybe you've had someone poison someone's mind against you, and you know what that's like. Now, when they, Satan is a master of distortion. He loves to distort the truth. Many people don't believe because they've heard half-truths about the gospel, and Satan will use those half-truths to poison the minds of people. That's, that's a sad deal, but it's a reality. And then in verse 3, though, here's what they did. So they remained for a long time. I love that. <clears throat> they remained for a long time speaking boldly for the Lord, who bore witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Here's what happened. So, Paul and Barnabas, they're preaching, right? People getting saved. All of a sudden, they get a report. Oh, the, the unbelieving Jews, they're making up lies. They're gossiping. People are getting mad at us, and they're, they're accusing us of conspiracy and all this kind of stuff. And <clears throat> they're accusing us of heresy and conspiracy and all this kind. Of, you know, people are starting to get mad at us and not like us. That would have been an easy time to say, maybe we should quit. Maybe we should leave and go somewhere else. But they didn't. They stayed right there even longer. And because they stayed longer, God did miracles. He stepped up the, the release of the resurrection power. First, it was powerful preaching. And then he stepped it up with powerful signs and wonders. All of this made possible by the resurrected Christ who lived in Paul and Barnabas. And you, so you see that when the devil releases an attack, God releases more power if we stay in it. Are you listening to me? Because sometimes the devil has attacked you. The devil has come against you, and you took that as a sign to quit. Well, what you ought to do sometimes is stay in, dig in your heels, and preach boldly. Dig in your heels when the opposition comes and the devil's poisoning the minds. That's not a sign to quit. That's a sign to stand firm and be bolder, right? We saw that in Acts chapter 4. Same thing happened. And so here's the thing. And then God, whenever you do that, God releases more power. See, that's how people know it's ri he's risen when that happens. But then here's... <clears throat> <clears throat> it's so funny to read this because it's like every verse is the opposite. Every verse. Then verse 4, what happens? But, <laughs> there's another but, but the people of the city were divided. One side with the Jews and one side with the apostles. Here we go again. The second thing the devil likes to do is sow division. The devil, if he can't use distortion, he'll use division. Division is when he starts trying to get people against each other. And if he can get this side against that side, and, and we can start protesting and fighting and arguing and bickering and trying to outvote and trying to maneuver and manipulate and try to attack each other and control each other, and why I'm the, we're the good guys, you're the bad guys, and all of a sudden the devil's got us. He's got us if we're divided against each other. If we can stop working together and start working against each other, you know, he can do that in your marriage. He can do it in your church. He can do it in your, in your job, in your community. He can do it in a nation. When the gospel starts going forward, first the devil will try to distort the truth. And then second, he'll try to divide the people. Now you look at this revival that broke out at Asbury a couple of months ago. It was great. And it's still great. But the devil came in and tried to distort the message. He tried to make it sound like something else. And then he started getting people all divided against each other. Well, you guys aren't doing it right. Some people said, oh, they're not. that's not real revival because it's not done the way my grandfather told me it's supposed to be done. It's not the way they taught me in seminary. 
And so it can't be revival until it's the way my professor in seminary told me it's supposed to be. Or whatever our book I read that told me how revival is supposed to work. Uh, it can't be real. And so now we're divided. Now we got divided against each other. Some people are in it. Some people not in it. And, uh, you know, it's kind of crazy. Do we quit? D d because the devil tries to divide people. Is that, well, I'm just going to quit. I've had people leave churches. You know, church gets moving. It happens all the time. Church gets rocking and rolling. Man, God's reaching people, touching people. Revival's happening. All this kind of stuff. All of a sudden, uh, somebody has a fight. Somebody gets in an argument, and then people leave and say, well, I just, I just don't like division. Look, look, stop. You live in a world full of division. Quit. Quit that nonsense. Quit getting all offended because there was a problem at church. And get back in there. Look what the apostles did. It says, uh, they, they just kept preaching. It says, but then it got ugly. Look at what happened in the verse 5. When an attempt was made by both Gentiles and Jews and their rulers to mistreat them and stone them. They learned of it and fled to Lystra and Derby, cities of Lyconia and the surrounding county. And there they continued to preach the gospel. You know what? Sometimes there is a time to leave. When it becomes abusive, see, these guys were not, these weren't just division now. The devil, the third step the devil will take is destruction. First is it's distortion. He'll try to mess up the truth. Second is division. And third is destruction. And you know what? Even though I said that most of the time we need to stand firm, there are times when the Lord will say, you know what? It's time to move on. Because it's becoming abusive. There's a place where when, when abuse happens, then it might be time to move on. And, I, and you do have to discern. that This isn't a, a, a foolproof pattern here where, oh, we always do this. You have to see the apostles listen to the Spirit. First, the Spirit says, you stay right there, and you keep preaching boldly, and they did. And then, you know, they said, now, they're getting divided, but you stand firm. You stay in it. You keep preaching. And, but then when it became, you know what, they're not interested in the truth. They're rejecting the truth, and they just want to hurt you. And Jesus said, don't throw your bread to the dogs. Don't throw your pearls to the pigs. There comes a point when you have to shake the dust off your feet and move on. And we said that in a previous message. There does come a point when it's time to go. I'm just saying sometimes we quit too early. Sometimes we quit too fast. And so we need to be in prayer. Is this, if you're in a struggle right now, you might be in a conflict and the devil has distorted the truth. He has divided the people and now he's trying to destroy you. There comes a point when you have to decide then I need to move to another place to fulfill the purpose of God. But that takes prayer. It takes time and discernment to see what is the Spirit saying to me right now. And so here's the thing. In verse 7, it ends up, there they continued to preach the gospel. Here, the thing that got me was that they, even though they had to leave that location, they didn't leave their vocation. Let me say that again. Even though they left their location, it doesn't mean they left their vocation. You hear what I'm saying? You might have to, to change jobs. You might have to go to a different community. You might have to, to move to a different place or, or, or invest in a different part of the community. But that doesn't mean you stop preaching the gospel. That doesn't mean you stop doing what God's called you to do. See, that's how we prove the resurrection on Monday. When the devil starts distorting and the devil starts dividing, and the devil starts destroying, A, you know you're doing something right. Because the devil doesn't attack unless you're doing something that God wants you to do. B, you, the, the answer is to draw closer to him and allow him to lead you into the next step. But even if you change your location, you keep your vocation. You keep that call to be obedient to God and to be faithful with his word. And to trust him. And I feel like I'm talking to people who maybe you're in a place where you're moving, uh, maybe even geographically, li to literally to another place. There may be the pastor who's, who's like, I'm in a place where I need to leave and go to another church. Um, you know what? Do, but don't quit your vocation. Don't quit what God's called you to do. It may be a person who's at a job that has become... Uh, more than divided, it's become so abusive. Our, our word today is toxic. Um, I'm not, I don't buy all the toxic talk, but some of it could be true. Um, sometimes it gets so bad, it's time to go. 
But even then, Jesus, when he moved to the Samaritans in one village, didn't want him, he kept going and went to the next place. He said, look, when they reject you in one city, go to the next one and, and shake the dust off your feet and preach the gospel. And I feel like I have this sense, and maybe it's just with people I know, but there just seems to be a lot of people being moved around. And I think it's God's kingdom strategy for what he's doing in this revival, in this spiritual awakening strategy. Um, don't think for a minute that it's over. Um, but but I think that God's moving some people. I think God's rearranging some pieces and saying, okay, now let's move over here and let's move this over here. And it may be that you're in that today. Um, it may be that this is the word of the Lord for you, that uh, you might change your location, but don't change your vocation. You know, God's called you to do, he, he may even call you to a different type of work, but you are still got the vocation to speak the truth and to demonstrate the gospel. When the devil comes at you and you uh, stay committed to him and to his ways, he will, God will release more power and God will release more strength. He will give you what you need in the hour. So don't give up. I feel like there's so many people that need to hear, don't give up. Now, you might move, but don't quit. You hear what I'm saying? I, I, know, I just feel like I need to repeat that over and over and over again. I, I, I don't want to be obnoxious, okay? Maybe I already am. Let me say that phrase one more time because this is the word of the Lord. If you change your location, don't change your vocation. Change the, you might change where God's got you, and God might move you to another place, but you keep faithful with the gospel. It says there they continue to preach the gospel. Uh, so let, let's speak that truth today. Let's say, God, wherever you have me to go, I'm committed to one thing preaching the gospel and living the gospel so that people know Jesus is risen. When the world sees us continuing to be faithful, no matter what happens, and when they see signs and wonders, miracles, the powerful gospel preaching. You see, that's all in that story. First, it was powerful gospel preaching. That's one level of power. Second, it was miracles and signs and wonders. That's another level of power. And third, it was simply the ability to keep on moving. That's another level of power. And so you, whatever happens, God always releases what we need in the hour of trial but we've got to stay close to him and we can't give up and we can't back down and we can't stop. We might move, but we don't quit. So listen, God's got you. He's with you. And in this time of transition in your life, in this time of changing and shifting, realize that it's the hand of God. God has his hand on all of these movements and changes. So make sure you're committed to him, whatever the circumstance. Listen, God bless you. Listen, the main thing is this. Let me, let me in these final moments, uh, you know, none of this really means anything if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. He rose from the dead with this power to give us hope and life and peace and power so we can be reconciled to God through the death of Jesus. It's through his cross that my sins are forgiven and I have hope of eternal life through faith in him. Do you have faith in Jesus today? Do you know that, have you trusted what he did for you on the cross on Good Friday? It was good because God made a way for you to know him and to be saved from your sins. Have you come to terms with that, first of all? And have you received his forgiveness of your sins? And then secondly, have you trusted in the resurrection power of Jesus Christ to not only forgive you, but to give you power to live like him on this earth. He, that's where it comes from. It comes from that resurrection power that God grants every believer. Is he living in you today? And Christian, are you releasing that power by the way you live, the way you talk, the way you love, the way you care, the way you worship, the way you serve? You know, have you, that's how that power comes through. It's through your obedience of faith, for trusting in God and doing whatever he tells you to do. Are you trusting him today? Listen, friend, if you've never uh, come to Christ, he has something wonderful for you. He wants to forgive you of your sins. And without his forgiveness, there is no hope of eternal life. And second, he wants to give you his peace in your heart and his power in your life. Do you want that? The Bible says that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be 
saved. And saved doesn't just mean rescued, it means restored. Do you need to be restored today? Do you need to put your life in God's hands and give it to Him? Then why not pray this prayer with me? Jesus, I need you. I love you and I thank you for loving me. I believe that you died for me on the cross and you paid for my sins. And Lord, I repent of my sins right now. I turn. And every sin I'm aware of, Lord, I just forgive, ask forgiveness and I turn from it. I forsake it. I forsake my old life. I crucify it. And Lord, I receive the Holy Spirit right now to fill me with power, to change me, to make me new. Now, Lord, I'm all yours and you're all mine. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, uh, I'd love to hear from you. You need to connect with a church, a pastor, uh, fellow Christians and say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm in. I've invited Christ into my life. What do I do now? Get some people who can help you grow. I'd love to hear from you. I won't try to sell you anything, but I will help you get some basic things you can do in your new walk with God. Listen, God bless you. Guys, don't give up. God bless you. Go in peace.